All right, so here's day 27 of my journey to a half a million dollar stock market portfolio. All right, so I'm going to go through the trades that I placed these past few days and also why I placed them and also my total balance. All right, so let's start with my total balance. So in my RSP, equity is 17,105. In my TFSA, 55,226. So it definitely dropped. And then finally in my margin account, 4167 so that one definitely dropped 76498 very disappointing i was at 82 last week now 76498 so that could be explained here if i sort it by position and then by open pnl you could see that the, my biggest losers is united states steel a few options amazon and netflix but these ones have a corresponding option that should cancel it out so Amazon put at 1760. I'm losing 1469. But if we go on the other side completely, Amazon put at 1755, 1337. So I'm not really losing 1400 on Amazon. I'm losing about $100 on Amazon. So the losers, the losers are going to be mostly from the stocks. So United States Steel, United States Steel 2700, Uber 841, and that's about it. For, and Zillow. 491 from Zillow, 219 from SNC. In my TFSA, biggest losers, Teva, of course, 2800 US, really, really hurts. Grubhub, 1800, just Sepaki Energy, 1500. Neo, 1184, the stock dropped 25% this week. Immunogen, 1000. Afria, 800, really bad, really bad decisions. And then in my RSP, you've got Novavax, 5200, 1000 square. 700 L brands. It's really disappointing. I don't I don't even know why you're still watching this video. Regardless, I'm not giving up. I've got a strategy and I'm going to stick to it. So my strategy really is to find a way to generate income every month, regardless of what happens to the market. That's what I'm looking for. And I've come to realize after watching a lot of a lot of videos that selling premiums is definitely the way to go. I'm convinced. Actually, there's two ways. Either you sell premiums or you invest in dividend stocks and never look back. But because dividend investing is more of a marathon, it's going to take more time and more capital. It just doesn't match my situation. So that's why I'm concentrating more on selling premiums because it's something that can be because it's something that can allow you to generate higher returns and you don't need that much capital. All right, so let's go through my trades this week. So first of all, let me talk about an earnings trade I made on Nike. So when Nike was trading at 87, right over here on Tuesday, I placed an earnings trade based on the expected move. Now, I saw that the expected move for earn for Nike was $5. So I, pl I did an iron condor. So when the stock was trading at 87, I did an iron condor at 92. The short strikes being 92 on the call side and 82 on the put side but i realized the premiums collected were was not worth it i would be collecting about 70 dollars but risking 230 dollars. so i felt that risk to reward wasn't worth it so i decided to do an iron fly iron butterfly which basically means when the stock was trading at 87 i sold a put option at 87 and a call option at 87 but then i bought for protection i bought the call at 92 and i bought the put at 82 so you see this range here from 82 to 92 but my short strikes were on were on 87 so i sold the put and call option at 87 i bought the 92 call option and i bought the 82 put option that allowed me to collect 353 dollars my maximum risk is the difference between the strikes so 92 and 87 or 87 and 82 so the difference is 500 minus the credit that I received already. So my maximum loss is $147. That's the max I can lose if Nike goes way past 92 or way below 82. Now today, Nike ended up being at trading around 92, 91.5 and 92. And for me to make, to keep this $353, I need Nike to be at 87 exactly come September 27th which was the expiration date. Now, because I collected $3.53, my break-even is 87 plus 353s. So my break-even is around 90 point something, 90.53. That's my break-even. At 
this price come expiry date i don't make money i don't lose money same thing on this side 87 minus 3.53 83 point i don't know 47 so this is my break even on this side so anything in between this is profit so come expiry date of september 27 if nike's trading anywhere between 83.47 and 90.53 i'll make a profit my maximum profit though is around 87 so the graph looks a little bit like this so now this morning because nike was trading close to 92 so it went past my break even and because i don't want to hold on to it till the expiry date i i closed it right away at around 10 o'clock i ended up closing this whole trade for about 400 dollars. so i collected 353 to open the trade but i closed it for 400 so i lost about 47 dollars. so i actually saved myself 100 dollars. i didn't wait till max loss i closed it early for only for, to lose only 47 dollars. obviously i went into this trade hoping to make profit but it happens sometimes the stock does go outside the expected move expected move being five dollars now the stock didn't go outside the expected move but it came very close and because I decided to sell an iron butterfly, my break even was only $3.53 away from 87. So it's act my break even was actually smaller than expected move. If I had done an iron condor where I where I just sold the 92 call and the 82 put, the problem is I was collecting very little premium compared to the risk that I was going to hold. So I lost $47 on this earnings earnings trade plus commissions of course of about $16. So yeah, this was a bad earnings trade, but could have been worse, but it's part of playing the earnings game. The more you place the more earnings trade you place that makes sense in terms of premiums collected, you should be you should end up profitable at the end. All right, so that was one of the trades I made this week. So if you know I played I had an iron condor on Apple, it is looking profitable. I mean, I sold it for about for about $80 and I could as you can see, I could close it here for anything between $38 and $54. But with commissions of $16, it might not be worth it. So I'm going to have to hold on to it. But of course, if I were with interactive brokers and I had very little commissions, which is like about less than a dollar per leg. So it would have been $3 in, $3 out. So about $6 or even less, actually. Then maybe I would, I'd consider closing this trade early. And when you close, when you manage winning trades early especially with credit spreads you increase your your probability of being right because you never know i mean anything can happen there's is, there's still two weeks left to this trade and apple could easily surpass 232 or could easily go below 207 especially especially with how volatile the market is i also had this vertical put on um, amazon or a put credit spread at 176 at 1760 short uh, which it, it surpassed because which today it surpassed it went all the way down to 1735 but luckily the market uh, rebounded a bit but who knows it could easily come back down again so when amazon was trading at around 1730 1740 i sold another one at the same expiry date of october 11 but I, I went at a lower put strike uh, of 1665 i plan on i plan on closing this one early the first one for a loss but when the market rebounded i felt like maybe i should hold on to it maybe it has a, a chance of being a winner as well i still have two weeks so my cmg um, iron condor was tested today on the put side the stock fell below 800 but luckily it rebounded and now it's trading at 820 so right now it's safe but it's still pretty close to my put side my call side is doing well my fedex vertical put that I have at 138 is doing well as well. FedEx is trading at 147, but it expired. The um, option trade expires October 25th, so I still have time. My IBM Iron Condor, I have short strikes at 147 and 137. IBM is trading right now at 143, so still safe, but this option trade expires October 11th, so I've got two weeks left. I've got Micron, it's a vertical call, so a call credit spread. I sold at a 55 strike. So as long as Micron stays below 55, I keep my premium collected. Now, I just realized something. Micron has earnings tomorrow. So this could be problematic because usually there's a lot of movement after earnings. So Micron could jump way past 55 after earnings, making my credit spread, which is right now profitable, making it a loser. So I'm going to try to close it early 
the problem is with commissions I'm, not, I'm gonna be left with $12 profit so I collected about $80 with this trade I can close it early for $56 so I'm closing it for less than what I sold it for so that's good but with commissions I'll be left with a very small amount kind of disappointing to do but if I want to avoid earnings then it's probably a good idea but I still have until October 18 I don't think Micron's gonna go to 55 one reason being or probably the only reason I think that is because if you look at the past month it already went up a lot I don't think it could continue going up that this much you look at the past six months from 33 to 51 so I don't see it going to 55 after earnings it's possible but if I have to make an assumption I would say it won't but if I have a chance to close it early tomorrow I'll do it just to avoid the risk because although I collected $80 on this trade I could lose $420 if it goes way past 55 I have this Netflix iron condor it's doing bad because Netflix is trading at 264 and I have a put of 275 I also have a call at 317 so the call side is profitable completely profitable but the put side is in trouble but my max loss on this is 2.5 so $250 minus the premium that I collected I think I collected a hundred dollars or close to a hundred dollars I collected here 40 plus 40 yeah so I collected about $85 so my max loss is 250 minus $85 that's my max loss on this trade and if I try to close this trade early I'd be closing it for about two dollars or two hundred dollars so there's no point closing it early I'm already close to max loss so might as well just wait it out I have two weeks left but I've got some other credit spreads on Netflix I've got one at, I've got a put credit spread at 255 right now Netflix is at 264 so for now this one's safe and then I've got another one at 235 so this one I placed yesterday when Netflix dropped uh, almost uh, almost 250 so I sold one at 235 collected about $80 on that one risking though $420 but how low can Netflix go it already went from 360 to 2 60 to 250 i think it's enough so in this iron condor this iron condor on nvidia is doing well almost at the middle got a call strike of 200 and a put strike of 160 and i think i sold it for 110 dollars i could close it early for for less so for about let's say 75 74 dollars but once again because of commissions i'm forced to hold on to it so i can make a decent profit Still have my Roku vertical put at 85. Roku is trading at 106. So I'm still safe on this one. It expires October 18. I just need Roku to stay above 85 come October 18. And I keep my full profit of about $75. I've got an Iron Condor on the Russell 2000 expiring October 11. I think this one I'm going to close early because the call side is going to get tested soon. Right now it's trading at 1550. My call site's at 1580. I think I collected about $189 with this trade. And if I wanted to close it, I'd close it for $2. So it's going to be a very small loser. But I think it's safer to close it. I still have two weeks. I think in two weeks, the Russell 2000, 2000 can surpass 1580. What matters the most is that I need it to stay below 280 come October 11. And I don't know if that can happen. So I think it's safer to just close it take the small 10 or 15 dollar loss and actually just place a new iron condor on the wrestle 2000 but a bit wider and i could go further out maybe to october 18 so i can collect a higher premium to compensate for that 10 or 15 dollar loss but as you can see the put side is definitely going to be profitable because i'm at 1450 and it's at 1550 so I'm, I'm doing well on the put side shopify was in trouble yesterday I, it, it went below 300 i have a put at 300 and a, a call at 400 so the call at 400 is doing very well i think it's also it's almost 100 percent profit but the, of course the uh, the three the put at 300 is in trouble it was it was definitely in trouble yesterday but today it went back over 300 so i just needed to stay above 300 come october 18 if I have a chance to close the put side early and maybe sell one a bit lower, I'll do it. But that could be an idea. That could be a way to manage this trade because it's very close to my put side. I could close this whole trade. It will be for a small loss, but then I'll make a new iron condor at different strikes, either at the same expiry date or go further out. I've got a vertical put on SPX. I think this one was today. I think I placed this one today, 2875 vertical put collected about 75 dollars 
No, oh, sorry, I collected $95 on that one. Risking obviously the difference between $500 and $95, so risking $405. Feel like I have a pretty good chance of winning as long as the SPX stays above $28.75 come October 18. I also have another vertical put or a put credit spread on the SPY expiring October 25th at a 284 strike. Collected, I think, about, about $70 or $75 on this one. So as you can see, I have a lot of trades on the SPY, the SPX, the Russell 2000, the Qs. So just the general index, the general market, because I find it safer, easier to manage, less headaches. They're always cyclical. So if it goes down, I know it's going to go up. If it goes up, it's going to come down. But a stock can really surprise you, like Netflix. It's hard to predict. Tesla, I have an iron collar on Tesla expiring in two weeks. It's a little bit close to the put side, closer than I want it to be. The call side is doing very well, almost 100% profitable. But the put side is a little bit uh, tested. But it, it actually dropped because the general market dropped. So it's just a matter of waiting for the for the market to rebound but when the, when tesla dropped to almost uh, 217 yesterday i sold one i sold another vertical put at a 200 strike expiring october 18 collecting a hundred dollars so as long as tesla stays above 200 come october 18 i keep the full 100 dollars. but most likely i'm going to close out the trade early if you remember i already had a tesla put credit spread i think expired september 30th but i already closed it early for 45 dollars. i had collected 100 dollars and i closed it early for 45 but what's annoying is the commissions again so 100 minus 45 so that's my profit 55 minus 16 dollars of commissions so down to 39 dollar profit from 100 dollars to 39 dollars of profit and i've got this put credit spread on ulta ulta beauty collected i think 80 dollars at a 215 put so as long as Ulta stays above 215 come October 18, I keep the uh, full $80. And right now Ulta is trading at 235. So this one's doing well. And finally, I just want to talk about the, my 100 shares of the Qs. So the Qs actually dropped all the way down to, actually we could see today, the low of today, I think it dropped all the way down to 186 today. So it's a little bit nerve wracking, but surprisingly, stock bounces back now it's trading at 190 i bought it at 191 but it's trading at 190 but i collected 151 dollars from this in one week and i plan on obviously if i end up keeping my shares because the queues stay below 191 i'm going to sell another call option so the first week i collected 151 dollars as we stand right now if i sell a call option expiring October 4th, which is the next week, which is next Friday, uh, obviously at the same strike of 191, I could probably collect around $143. But that'll depend where the queue is trading at come Friday. All right, so that, this was just a quick overview of my portfolio. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, leave them in, leave them in the comment section below. Like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral code in the description below the video to get up to $250 back. Thanks for watching.